Hello Generals, this is Mark 5 from WeFu, and welcome to WeFu's initial gameplay tutorial that covers city levels 1 through 4. I want to talk about a couple of things before we get started, just to kind of set the tone for this game. And that is, this game is as much about resource and resource management as it is about fighting. In order to advance your city, you're going to need resources. In order to build your army, you're going to need resources. And in order to replace the casualties that you're inevitably going to receive, you're going to re you're going to need resources. So resources are a very important part of this game. Talking about casualties, you need to understand that this is a war game. You are going to be attacked in this game. And in games, there's times you will lose your army. Matter of fact, there's times you'll lose it more than once. And there are times that you will lose your city more than once. My first game, I lost my capital twice. If you cannot handle that, this is not the game for you. I just want to give you fair warning. So, here's what you do if you're attacked. Fight it out. You will never get good at fighting if you don't fight. Too many people surrender too fast in this game. The next thing is learn from your mistakes. You're going to lose. Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. Don't blame it on Jimmy. Don't blame it on the other guys cheating. Just figure out what you did wrong, learn from your mistakes, and get better. Trust me, it works. And last, respawn and rebuild. Most experienced players in this game are going to respect somebody that has a little bit of grit and they are not afraid to get back in the fight. And respect goes a long way in this community. So here's what you don't do if you're attacked. Don't throw a tantrum. Don't go in chat and start calling people names, calling people cheaters. You know, nobody cares. It's a war game. Deal with it or go play a game like Farmville where everybody's on the same side and we're all friendly. And don't surrender. You will never get better if you don't fight. I, we, you know, we see people uh, surrender as soon as the scout, scouts show up, and at that point, we just I don't understand why you would even play this game. Stick in the fight. So now that I've said all that, get that off my chest, let's, uh, let's get started with the tutorial. The first thing you're going to notice as soon as you enter the game is that you have quests available. You have protection that lasts for eight hours. And then there are rebels spawning inside of your city. Those scumbags. So let's deal with this one thing at a time. Talking about the quest, if you select the quest icon, it's going to open up and show you your primary quest. Now in this particular case, we have to build an army base. <clears throat> so what you're going to do is you're going to select your city. And then you're going to come down and you're going to select the build icon. That will open the build menu. Select your army base. And then once you hit the construct button, it's going to open up a slot. Now, this is probably a good time to talk about our earlier video, which talks about the layout of the city. Because you, you kind of need to have an idea of how you're going to lay your city out before you even build the first item. Okay, and I'll put a link to that in the, uh, in the comment section below. So once that gets started, and um, your your city's done. We're going to get uh, a mission complete, and at that point, we'll get some XP and some cash. Now, I want to take you back into the uh, quest icon, and let's look at the secondary quest. The thing about the secondary quest is they do not automatically claim the rewards. You have to do that manually. And what's important about that is they will not progress to the next quest until you actually claim the reward. And in a lot of cases, the secondary quests are as important as the primary quest. And we'll see that later as we move along. So talking about your shield, your shield is going to last until either the time expires. And the starting shield is eight hours uh, until you destroy a building or until you capture a building that has already been destroyed. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to leave your shield up until you get some turrets to defend your city. Let's talk about the rebel spawns. There are two types of rebel spawns. The first type start at the beginning of the game spawning inside of your city. They have a very rapid respawn. They will respawn almost as soon as you kill them. They're a good source of early experience points, and they stop spawning shortly after your city reaches level 3. 
Now, the second type of rebel spawns spawn outside of the city, usually to the northeast, or I'm sorry, the northwest and the and the west. And they're on a timer, which is a bit slower than the than the inside of cities. And uh, they are also a good a source of of XP, but also of stealing cash. And they will start spawning shortly after your city reaches level three. So by this time, you should have your city to level two. Notice that you're going to get XP cash, but now you're going to get a scout vehicle. So you claim that. So that your city is level two, we want you to go ahead and build everything that you can build and level everything to level two. And then just sit in the city and farm those rebels for XP and keep doing the quests. So this is a good time to zoom out and take a look around. Every city in the game starts out with a, a level one steel and two level one villages adjacent. I think there's one or two that don't, but most of them do. These uh, these resources are lightly defended and they're very easy to capture, and they should be taken first. Now, further away from the city, there are other resources that are in the area. Now, these are level five and they have much better defenses. Now, the oil, rubber, and cash are all very important. The oil is needed for aircraft and, and building ships the rubber is needing is needed to build land troops and for leveling the oil resources and the cash is needed for pretty much everything but because we're going to need rubber before we need everything else let's go ahead and take that first or that'll become our priority so knowing that we have a target of the rubber that's north of our of our city let's uh, do the following attacks we're going to attack south and take the village then we're going to come over to the west and, and take the next village, and then we'll go to the north, take the steel, and then from there we'll proceed north even further, and we'll take the rope. Okay, sound like a plan. So uh, let's zoom back in now that we have a plan, and let's talk about managing your troop count. Now, if you notice in the top left corner of the screen, you have what's called a troop count, and next to your avatar, you have a battle level. These two are linked. First of all, your troop count, you start the game with a troop count of eight. And every time your battle level goes up by one, your troop count increases by two until you reach level 30. After 30, every time your battle level goes up by one, your troop count goes up by one. And then once you're at level 10, or I'm sorry, once you get a, a, a city level 10, your troop count goes up by two. And every time you capture an additional city, or level additional city to 10, you get another two. But also every time you lose a city that's level 10, it also goes down by two. Okay. Now, um, pro tip here, don't don't overbuild your infantry and scouts while you're just sitting here farming this XP. Because you've only got so many troop count, and you want to get the most bang for your buck. So at some point you're gonna you're gonna finish a, a kill quest in here, and if you notice, you're gonna get your first light tank. Now let's talk about the information uh, icon. If you look in, if you no matter what you're looking at, a city or a, a building or a unit, they all have a little information button. So I want you to hit that and look at the uh, look at an infantry unit. Now this screen is broken into several parts. You have your basic information, which uh, covers the the health of the unit, the move, the range, and sort of thing. Then you've got its attack versus all the different categories. You've got a supply section, which is a highly unappreciated field. Then you've got your defense. And then if, if the unit has any kind of special uh, abilities that would be listed over here. So right now we only have three units available to us, and we know that we're going to be attacking three resource zones. So I wanted to take you to look and just compare the building attack for all three units. This is why I don't want you building too many infantry or recon, because each light tank literally has twice of the building attack power as an infantry and almost double that of a scout vehicle. So if we've only got a few troop count, we want to get as much as, as much combat power in that troop count as we possibly can. So at some point in here, um, we'll have finished leveling everything to two and our city will become level three. So while we're at level three, we're going to start building up the defense. We're going to start capturing those zones. We're going to keep doing the quest. We're going to build more troops. Then we're going to level all of the buildings in the city that we can currently build. We're going to level everything to three. 
So let's get more tanks building because we should have gotten some from Quest. Well, now that you're level 3, you'll notice that the rebels have started spawning outside the city. Next thing you'll notice is that we now can build turrets. As a matter of fact, I'll have a quest to build some. So let's hit the select all icon, which uh, selects every unit that's visible on the map at the time. With all these units selected, go ahead and hit the attack icon. And then select a point on the ground near the village. This is probably a good time to start talking about basic unit commands. The first command that you have is four arrows, and it's a uh, move order, and it tells the unit to move to a location, and it ignores the enemy. It won't fight, so it actually gets to the location. The next command is an attack order, and there are two options once you select attack. The first option is selecting the ground, which tells the unit to move to that location on the ground, attacking any enemy as they come in range. The second option is if you select a unit or a building, it will move in the, the your unit will move into range of that target and it will start attacking that target and it ignores everyone else except the target that you selected. The stop order obviously cancels all the all the current orders and tells the unit to stop. And then the whole position command tells the unit to attack any enemy that enters into its range. Um, and that range depend that range varies depending on the unit. Some units have a wide aggro range, and other units have a smaller aggro range. And that's not the range that they fire; that's the range that they respond. Uh, and then when the enemy is either destroyed or moves away, that unit will then return back to the original position that it was. And last basic command is to enter a base. And depending on the type of unit, whether there's any transport available, uh, it will enter either an army or an airbase. Going back to this example, if you had told these units to attack the village, the infantry would be ignored and they would just drive up and attack the village. But instead, we tell them to attack near the village, so they drive up and attack the infantry as soon as the infantry comes in range, and then once the infantry is dead, they'll switch over and attack the village. That's why I want you to, to give them an attack or place it near the village. While your units are attacking the village, you should have new units become available. As this happens, check the health of the village. If the village is almost dead, there's no reason to send them over and help. You can go ahead and start sending them to the next target and let them get started over there. Also, don't forget to check your secondary quests because as you're killing units and building new things, you'll find that you'll start having quests uh, complete. Speaking of quests, if you notice, one of your quests is to produce Panzer uh, three tank armaments, and then by producing two, you get a third one to, for free. Free units are always good, and it's one of the reasons why you want to pay attention to these secondary quests, because it's kind of critical. Um, going back to the thought that resources are important, any unit you can build for free, and you don't have to spend resources uh, to build it, that's a good thing. So we're going to kill that village, and I want you to notice that once the village is destroyed, your shield is gone. Uh, this is probably a good time to talk about special unit commands. Infantry have a green icon that gives them the ability to capture. This is for infantry and motorized infantry only. They can capture a zone that's been destroyed. And then tanks have a force march icon, which allows them to increase their speed drastically, but it also increases their supply unit. Uh, usage and they can't attack while they're in this mode. So go ahead and capture the village at the same time that you're sending the rest of your army over to start knocking down that second target. With your army at size 12, it should not take you nearly as long to kill the second village as it did to kill the first village. So once that's dead, go ahead and capture that and then send your army to the third target. One thing you're going to notice when you send your army to the third target is you don't have any scouts over there. So your force marching like tanks will arrive before the scouts reveal the enemy. And this poses you with um, an issue you need to deal with. That is, when the tanks get there, they will start attacking the building and ignore the tanks, which allows the tanks just to come up and start pounding on them. We don't want this. So take your tanks and then retarget them on the rebel tanks. 
<clears throat> this will let them knock out anything that's shooting at you and then kill the building at your discretion. When your units are stacked up like this, uh, it can be hard to pick out the one you want, and by this time, those tanks should have been sh shooting something. So the way you find the unit you want is you look at this little personnel icon on the left, and once you click, it'll open up your uh, groupings. We'll talk about groupings in another video, but for now, this allows you to singly go through and pick out your units, and as you see, I've picked out recon unit number five. I see that it has some damage, but not near enough to want me to pull it out of the fight. But this is how you can pick units out of a stack like that. Once that building has been destroyed, go ahead and capture the steel. By this time, uh, you should be getting close to level four city. And at level four, we're going to get our first aircraft. We're going to keep doing the quest. And you're really going to start looking at reorganizing your army a little bit. We want to level all the resource buildings and the munitions factory to four, and then the airfield to level three. And we'll start building up uh, the villages that we just captured. Also notice that once you get to level four, one of the mission rewards gives you a, a new type of unit, which is an anti-tank gun. And the, the munitions factory at this point, once you level it from three to four, it can build two different types of units. One is the anti-tank gun, and the second is the scout. So get that uh, munitions factory level to four, build an airfield, go ahead and train those anti-tank guns. And once again, if you notice, uh, producing 57 millimeter anti-tank gun armaments, this time gives you an assault gun uh, armament, which is very important. So it's kind of important to get the anti-tank guns building because we, we are going to want that anti we're going to want that assault gun. By this time, your villages should be done pacifying. So what you do is you start repairing them, then you open up the build menu, and you'll see the option to build either a farm, which produces cash, or sniper towers. When you close that out, you'll see that you have four slots to uh, construct in. Now, I recommend that you place your towers on the city side of the resource. I see a lot of people put them on the outside, and a lot of that's opinion. But I would, uh, I'd recommend you put them towards the city. Let's head back over to the city. Uh, now that that's done, and we're going to open up the airfield, and we're going to turn the scout plane. Now, scout planes... Is, this is your first aircraft, and you'll use it throughout the entire game. And for the most part, it's going to replace your scout vehicles. Um, we should also have some quests done, so go ahead and open up your army base. And you're going to want to train an assault gun and a medium tank, which you should have gotten from a kill quest. So if you notice, we've only got two slots left on our troop count, but we've got three uh, troops building. So let's deal with that. So let's open up the army base. And what we're going to do is we're going to select two of the scouts and two of the infantry. We're going to come down and we're going to cl click the dismiss button. And when you do, you notice that you get cash, population, and steel um, as kind of a refund. Now, this is only half what you would have gotten because um, I went ahead and, and did some of them individually in the game before I, I, I remembered I needed to, to take a screenshot of it. But if you notice, when you come out, we're now at 10 of 16, and we've got plenty of room for these new troops. So keep leveling, and where we want to end up is we want all of the resources and the munitions factory at level 4. We want the airfield, the army base, and the three turrets at level 3, and then level your city to 5. And that's where we're going to draw this tutorial uh, episode to a close. On our next episode, we'll go attack that rubber. And at that point, we'll start showing some live gameplay footage and work a little bit on tactics.